Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to ICD-10-CM. This is a very important code set that every medical coder needs to know. It's been around for a while, but if you don't do a lot of medical coding, you might not be familiar with how to use it. But don't worry because I am here to help. My name is Victoria Moll. I am a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. If you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all the thumbs up, likey, sharey, YouTubey things. ICD-10-CM is the International Classification of Diseases 10th Revision Clinical Modification. It's a coding system that is used for healthcare purposes to classify medical disorders and diseases. We use this system to help classify that data because we need that for billing purposes, for reimbursement purposes, and more importantly, things like just having that health data so we can use it for research and we can even use it for things like budgeting healthcare costs. The first version of ICD was developed in 1893 by the International Statistical Institute. So it was initially designed because it wanted to collect and classify the data just based off cause of death. But then later on, we needed more expansion. So it included lots of other health conditions, not just the data on cause of death. So the ICD has undergone a lot of revisions over the years, and each version introduces new codes and updated classification. Uh, the most recent version of ICD that's been released is ICD-11. Now, it is available, but that doesn't mean that we're using it within the United States. There are a couple of countries that are using it, but we're not going to transition to ICD-11 within the United States for a long period of time. But it is out there. We are currently using the 10th revision, ICD-10. One of the big things, though, that was adapted from this change to I-10 to I-11 is there's a lot of expansion now for mental health disorders. So U.S. still on ICD-10-CM. We're going to be on ICD-10-CM for a long time. Um, and then that CM that we talked about, that's the clinical modification. That's the version of ICD-10-CM that we use in the United States. There are different tweaked versions of ICD-10 that get used in different countries. For example, ICD-10-CA is the version that they used in Canada. So our ICD-10-CM that we use in the United States, that was developed by the World Health Organization, and we adopted it in the U.S. in 2015, which replaced our icd 9 coding system. So the ICD-10 coding system includes a lot more codes and a lot more specificity than our previous versions did. And the previous code set didn't have a lot of additional room for expansion of adding new codes in. So the ICD-10 system included a lot more codes, a lot more specificity, you know, right, left of different disorders uh, on different locations, and a lot more detailed classification of those different uh, medical disorders and different medical statuses or risks or any important kind of data that we would like to, to collect on that patient. Even something like a uh, reason for a visit for maybe like a physical exam. The patient doesn't have a disease or disorder, but like we want to know what was the purpose of that visit. It could be for a physical exam. It could be for, you know, a sports physical. So even though that's not an illness or disease, it's kind of like a health status. ICD-10-CM codes are alphanumeric, meaning we use numbers and letters in the code set, and they can be as little as three characters, and they can go up as many as seven characters, depending on the specificity. Those first three characters of the code represent what we call the category, and that's the category of the diagnosis or that condition. So the remaining characters provide additional detail about that condition. It could be right, left. It could be if it's something like uh, with or without status asthmaticus or something like that. So overall, that history of the ICD coding reflects that ongoing evolution that we've had in healthcare and in the evolution of medical knowledge and, you know, how important it is to have detailed, accurate, consistent health data that we can classify, that we can sort, that we can organize. Because we need that for research. We need that for research on our patients with these diagnoses doing better on these medications. We need even things like if we have a population of this many patients in a location, uh, how many of them are developing complications of their diseases? What is their health care cost? How much are we going to project that we maybe need to put in a federal budget, like a Medicare budget, to take care of all of these patients with these conditions in future years? 
Now we have different code sets available in medical coding. There's CPT, which is current procedural terminology, and that's licensed. It's owned by the American Medical Association. So you can't, for example, like take all of the data and sell it to someone, right? So ICD-10 though is free use. It's something that's provided by websites for the CDC, or I think Medicare even, even has it. So you can download the data for free. Now, if you want a printed book, or a published ebook, it's probably going to cost you. And if you get one that has, you know, some components that you might need for coding purposes or for exam purposes, things like grids to help you select the right code or illustrations, or maybe even uh, better looking font, you're going to have to pay for a book. You can download the data files. They're not going to be pretty, uh, but you can download them for free because the code set data is available for free. Now for ICD-10-CM, there's lots of different publishers available. If you're taking a CPC exam, you can use any publisher's version that you want for your ICD-10 uh, book. So they have ones from AAPC, they have AHIMA versions, they have Optum 360, they have Bux, they have AMA, there's all different versions and each have their own pros and cons. Some might have different font types, um, some might have guidelines within each chapter instead of just at the front. Some may have decision trees, colored charts. Oftentimes if you find a cheaper edition, it's because it's not going to have those bells and whistles. It's just going to give you the codes, but it might not give you some of those nice charts or graphs or illustrations. I like this AAPC version because I think it's good if you're sitting for AAPC exams because they give you little hints and tips and tricks and things that are there because they know you're going to use it for the exam and they want to kind of help guide you along. But honestly, just any version can do the essential code lookup, even the ebook versions. Now, a lot of people only know ICD 10 CM from a very surface level. So they think that it's like a phone book or like a dictionary where you just look up terms, but there is so much more to it than that. There is a huge amount of guidelines to how to use these codes, to when to use these codes, to in order of sequencing for these codes. And we have both general guidelines and then we have guidelines for each chapter, which is kind of broken down by like anatomy kind of uh, groupings. And we have guidelines for each specific chapter. There's even differentiations between how we code for a patient who is admitted inpatient, admitted to the hospital, uh, versus a patient who is not admitted to the hospital. But you won't know everything that's in the book unless we actually take a look into the book. So let's take a look at the book. So again, different versions are going to be organized possibly a little bit differently than mine. The first thing in here is these tabs. So I have a whole video that you can check out on how to tab your CPT books, your ICD-10-CM books. It doesn't really change drastically from year to year, so you can still use those old videos, but I may consider making some updated ones. Definitely let me know in the comments if you feel that I need to make a 2023 tabbing video. First, we're going to start here with our table of contents. So here is our table of contents for the ICD-10-CM. You can see there's uh, included in here things like guideline tips, features, the symbols. So if you need to know the symbols for ICD-10-CM, they're also listed, though, at the bottom of the book. There's a little legend that you can see at the bottom of the book pages if you need to know what any of those little icons mean. But there is also a page that will tell you the legends as well. It's a great place to start if you're getting familiar with your book, so you can go through and see where are all the different sections, what is in this, where are the things like the table of neoplasms, and again, there's a whole video that just talks about the table of neoplasms. One of the first things you're going to come to is the official guidelines for coding and reporting for ICD-10-CM. If you are a coder, if you are going to sit for your CPC exam or your CRC exam or any medical coding exam, read through the guidelines. I know they don't look very interesting. I know it looks like, oh, maybe these are not important. They're things that in a book we would typically skip, but the guidelines are very important for medical coding and you do need to read through them. You don't need to memorize them. In fact, in medical coding, there's very little memorization. You don't have to really memorize the codes. You just need to know how to find them. I personally don't even know off the top of my head what all the guidelines are for sepsis, but I can guarantee you if I get a note where a patient has sepsis, I will I know to go and double check those guidelines in the ICD-10-CM guidelines. It is not about knowing the codes, it is about knowing where to find them. The first section of the guidelines is just going to be our guidelines for general purposes and reporting. So we have guidelines I said that are for 
um, each specific chapter, and then we have ones that are just general guidelines. So for example, here we have one, um, the placeholder character X. So if you see a character X in a code, so sometimes we have like a seventh character we, we need on a code for like, is it the uh, initial, is it a subsequent, or is it a sequela of that condition? And we might only have a category, that first three digits. So if we need that seventh digit, but there's nothing for digits four, five, and six, we fill in that placeholder character X. In ICD-10-CM, we'll see NEC or NOS. NEC is not elsewhere classifiable. NOS is not otherwise specified. So NEC means we have the specificity in the documentation. There's just no code for that level of specificity. NOS is the provider didn't specify. Now, because this is just an introduction, we're just learning a little bit about ICD-10-CM. I'm not going to go over every single guideline. I'm not going to go every every single chapter specific guideline. If you are interested in that, though, I have an entire playlist. If you go to the front of the channel to the ICD-10-CM guidelines playlist, it'll walk you through all of the guidelines and then the updates that have happened since those recordings. And here's what I mean by some of these decision trees. This is only in the AEPC version. Not every version of ICD-10-CM is gonna have a decision tree like this one in regards to coding for diabetes. So we have our general guidelines and then we have lots of chapter specific guidelines. Chapter 19, for example, is for injury poisoning and certain other consequences of external causes and all of the guidelines that pertain to that. Now, one of the nice features about this book, which they didn't used to have, is say we're here in chapter 19 and we're looking at these codes and we think, oh gosh, I know there's some kind of guideline in regards to this. At the beginning of this chapter, of chapter 19, they have placed all of the guidelines. So you don't have to flip the whole entire T to the front of the book you can just go right to the front of this chapter for the guidelines that pertain to this chapter, in this case, chapter 19. Now, this edition does include the practical steps for using the ICD-10-CM book, which is then followed by the symbols and conventions. So we have symbols for things like if it's a pediatric patient, we have symbols for things like if it's highlighted in yellow, we know it's an unspecified code. We even have things like if we have a new code, we have revised text, um, and even if it is new text. This edition has lots of illustrations, digestive system, uh, musculoskeletal system, cardiology, nervous system, and then we get into bum, 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 the index to diseases and injuries. This is our starting point for all ICD-10-CM code lookup, and this is where our guidelines instruct us to start. In those guidelines that we were just looking at in the front of the book, they do have general coding guidelines that tell us how to locate the ICD-10-CM book, and it states, to select a code in the classification that corresponds to a diagnosis or reason for visit documented in the medical record, first locate the term in the alphabetic index and then verify the code in the tabular list. I'll show you in a second what the tabular list is. Read and be guided by the instructional notations that appear in both the alphabetic index and the tabular list. It is essential for both the alphabetic index and tabular list when locating and assigning a code. The alphabetic index does not always provide the full code. Selection of the full code, including things like laterality or any applicable seventh character, can be done in the tabular list. So a dash at the end of the alphabetic index entry indicates an additional character is required. Even if a dash is not included in the alphabetic index entry, we still have to go back and refer to the tabular list to verify that no seventh character is required. So this is our alphabetic index, and it starts from A to Z. We'll talk about finding the main term. I actually have a whole video that gives demonstrations on how to find the main term. So if you're looking at a, a, a diagnosis that has five different words in it, what's the word that we look at first in our index? They do have these yellow guidelines that can help follow you. So if we look here at this word uh, compression, there's lots of different things under compression and these lines will guide us to further specificity by, by, with the indentations. So here we have compression with injury, compression artery, compression brachial, compression brain, and then everything that's indented here is brain due to, and we have due to contusions, we have due to uh, injury, and then it goes back out into indentations. So this is still pertaining to brain, but not due to. So it's brain, non-traumatic, traumatic, and then we go to our next section, 
bronchus. So not related to brain. This is just the next alphabetic thing there. Now, the majority of things you're going to look up from A to Z are going to be in this alphabetic index, but we also have a couple of different tables and uh, other references here. So this one is called the table of neoplasms. Neoplasms meaning new growths or things that are lesions, uh, cancers in particular. We have this broken down by if it's a a new growth that is benign, if it's malignant, if it's like a carcinoma in situ, which means it's cancerous, but it's not spreading. If it's not specified, if um, it's, uh, we don't know, it's uncertain. So all the different locations are provided that we could have new growths on, even things like your toes, your skin, um, your uh, body organs. And then we, we use this table to select the right code based off of that location and what kind of lesion it is or, or growth, if it's cancerous, benign, etc. For example, if I was looking up a code for colon cancer, we would go to colon and then real close in, I'll get you guys colon. And then if it's cancerous, so malignant, it would be focus in colon malignant primary C18.9. And we would go into our tabular list again, which we'll look at, and that's our listing of all the different codes. Next is our table of drugs and chemicals. As I'm sure you can imagine, there are a lot of drugs and chemicals out there and a lot of uh, problematic situations patients can be in because of these different drugs. They could be uh, intentionally taking them to cause harm to themselves. They could be taking too little, taking too much. They could just have an allergic reaction to something, right? So that's all contained in here in this table of drugs and chemicals. It could be like if you overdose on your codeine pills, or it could be if you have an allergic reaction to detergent. Most of them are listed by their generic name. So for example, here you won't see Tylenol listed. You would have to look under acetaminophen. Here we have the index to external causes of injuries. Some people find some of the codes in here very amusing because, of course, they're kind of accident related. If you trip and fall or get bitten by a turtle or attacked by a duck, this is where you would find the codes for those. And of course, it's things like if you were to fall on a campfire or if you were to uh, be involved in a blizzard or an automobile accident or um, an aircraft accident but also if you were bitten by a raccoon. After that is when we start getting into the tabular list. They are listed by chapter. So chapter one is certain infectious and parasitic diseases. So codes A00 through B99. We start with the chapter specific guidelines and then it gets into the codes themselves. So if it were to tell you to go and look up in the alphabetic index code A01, here's where you would find code A01. There are currently 22 chapters in ICD-10-CM. So chapter one is certain infectious and parasitic diseases. Chapter two is neoplasms. Chapter three is our diseases of blood and blood forming organs and disorders involving immune mechanisms. Chapter four is endocrine, nutritional and metabolic diseases. Chapter five is mental, behavioral and neurodevelopmental disorders. Chapter six, diseases of the nervous system. Chapter seven is diseases of the eye and adnexa. Chapter eight is diseases of the ear and mastoid process. Chapter nine is diseases of the circulatory system. Chapter 10, diseases of the respiratory system. Chapter 11, diseases of the digestive system. Chapter 12, diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Chapter 13, diseases of the musculoskeletal system and connective tissue. Chapter 14, Diseases of Genitourinary System. Chapter 15, Pregnancy, Childbirth, and the Purpurium. Chapter 16, Certain Conditions Originating in the Perinatal Period. Chapter 17, Congenital Malformations, Deformations, and Chromosomal Abnormalities. Chapter 18, Symptoms, Signs, and Abnormal Clinical and Laboratory Findings Not Elsewhere Classified. Chapter 19, Injury, Poisoning, and Certain Other consequences of external causes. Chapter 20 is external causes of morbidity. Chapter 21 is factors influencing health status and contact with health services. 
And then chapter 22 is codes for special purposes. The interesting thing about chapter 22 is some people think that their book is malfunctioning and they don't have this in here because it's just this tiny little page and they miss it because this is a, a fairly new chapter. Um, but the, th the thing that trips people up is it's not in alphabetical order. So if you'll see, these are the U codes and people will think that they come right after our T codes. But because these are organized by chapter and not necessarily alphabetical order, and we added in chapter 22 kind of late in the game, um, it comes after chapter 21, not after the codes that start with the letter T. There's a few appendices then in the book. Appendix A is the Z codes for long-term use of drugs, followed by... Appendix B, which is our summary of the 2023 ICD-10-CM code changes. And of course, this will change for whatever current year book you have. And it's just kind of a quick reference of the things that are new, revised, or deleted from the prior year's code set. Now, again, those first three digits are known as the category. And you can see their symbols here because ICD-10-CM likes to help us out, saying that we need an additional symbol here. Here we need an additional fourth character, and then it tells us, oh yeah, we need these additional fifth or sixth characters for some of them. And they give us all kinds of notes. So for the seventh characters, our seventh character, if we if it's an initial encounter, we use A as the seventh character. If it's a subsequent encounter, we use D as the seventh character and S for sequela. As we indent further, we give more specificity and we make sure that we're using the appropriate amount of characters for the highest level of detail possible. So this S66.0 is injury of the long flexor muscle, fascia, and tendon of thumb at wrist and hand level. And then it expands further to tell us these are unspecified. And then is it the right thumb? Is it the left thumb? Is it unspecified thumb? And then this code is unspecified, but this one is same location, but a strain of the long flexor muscle, fascia, and tendon of thumb at wrist and hand level. And again, they give us specificity for, is it the right? Is it the left? Is it unspecified? And you'll see here, it tells us we need these seventh characters. Well, how do we find out what those seventh characters are? Oh, they're up here. These are the seventh characters that we need to add on. You'll see notes in ICD-10-CM like here where it says code first, underlying diseases such as, and they'll tell you what things to code first, if the patient has those conditions. You'll also see notes that will say use an additional code. So in addition to this code as a secondary or maybe third or fourth or fifth code, we would use an additional code for any associated perforated tympanic membrane. And then it even gives us a range of codes we should use. It should be something from category H72. And remember that dash means we need some additional characters. So we would have to go over to H72 and see what the additional characters are that we would need. A lot of codes, especially those in cardiology, will tell you to use an additional code if applicable to identify if the patient has any kind of smoking history. All the different things, are they using tobacco? Are they dependent on tobacco? Are they environmentally exposed to tobacco smoke? So how do we look up a code? We look up what that diagnosis is. We discover what the main term is, what we want to look up first to locate that code. And then the main term is usually uh, the name of the condition or the symptom. It's not usually like a location. So if we have pain in the knee, we're not looking for the location. We're looking for what is what is that patient having? They're having pain. And then we go into that alphabetic index, everything from A to Z. We look up that main term and it's going to give us that corresponding code that we need to look up. We look up as high as to the specificity as it'll give us in the alphabetic index. And then we verify in where that tabular list, that listing of all the different codes by chapter. So we verify that code or we verify the further extensions of that code that we need. If we need to add a seventh character, if we have uh, more specificity that needs to go into it. And then we look at all the guidelines around it. Is there something that needs to get coded first? Is there something that needs to get coded after that? Do we have to sequence things in a different way? Make sure we're applying the guidelines pertaining to those codes as well. Let's walk through a couple of basic examples. So for example, celiac disease. Under celiac disease, we're going to start with disease. So here you can see by the top of the page that we are at disease. Now there's nothing else on this disease. It usually gives you a range. So the words that are on this page, for example, are from dilation to a disease. And then over here, we just have disease. 
So here we have disease celiac, and it gives us code K90.0. Now, chances are good that's the right code. Uh, are there situations where coders will just code directly from the alphabetic index and not in the tabular because they're trying to save time? Have I done it? Technically, though, the instructions say we look at the alphabetic index, verify in the tabular. So here is our K90.0 celiac disease. Now, again, we have notes here. They're in red because it's like, hey, pay attention to me. Uh, use additional code for any associated disorders, including dermatitis, including uh, glutenataxia. And this says code also exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. So that's our code for celiac disease. Now, what if we have something a little bit more complicated? What if we're looking at uh, migraine prolonged with aura. Unlike celiac disease, migraines have a lot of codes. There's a lot of different specified types of migraines. So this is a migraine and it's got an aura. So let's start here with our code for migraine. So we have migraine, we have oh, with aura, and then these things in the parentheses here are what we call non-essential modifiers, meaning they're just to kind of help guide you along. So if you're looking at something and you see, oh, it's migraine and this says acute onset, oh yeah, that's this is the right one. But if it doesn't say that, it's non-essential. So it's just kind of to help you guide along. If it says it, that's great. You're like, you're, oh, well, yeah, I know I'm in the right section because this is prolonged. Um, but if even if it didn't say prolonged, we'd still be in the right area, whether it did or did not say prolonged. But here we've got our migraine with the aura and that says prolong there that for our non-essential modifier and let's see here with aura prolonged without headache and then it gives us g43109 so here's our g43109 migraine with aura not intractable without status migrainatis, also known as migraine with aura not otherwise specified. And you'll see here, it tells us we do need a sixth character, but it doesn't say here that we need a seventh character. So that would be our correct code, G43109. Um, but it does say under this section to code also any associated seizure. So if this patient has seizures that are associated with this, we would code those as well. Last, let's look up the code for plaque psoriasis. So what's our main term, plaque or psoriasis? It's going to be psoriasis. That's the condition. So if we look under psoriasis, we have psoriasis, arthropathic, buccal, flexural, cutate, mouth. Oh, there's plaque. Plaque is L40.0. And then L40.0 says psoriasis vulgaris, and then it gives us the example that's included here, which is plaque psoriasis. So there you have it. ICD-10-CM is that standardized coding system we use to report out all the different diagnoses and medical conditions that are in medical records. It can seem a little complex and daunting at first when you're really diving into some of those guidelines. But mastering ICD-10-CM is really important to medical coders, not just for billing purposes, but for that data, for the research, for making sure that we have accurate documentation that matches up to everything. We want to make sure that the patient care that's reported is being accurately reflected in the code so that it can be reimbursed correctly and that patients don't wind up with all kinds of headaches in regards to their medical bills. We want this health data to be accurate. We want it to be consistent. We want it to be meaningful. And with that continued growth that we're having of healthcare technology, of healthcare consumption, of all of the future projections we need to make on budgetary means, as far as regulatory means, we need to make sure that this information that we're abstracting, that we're codifying, is correct. It's extremely important, and that importance and that level of scrutiny and detail is just going to increase. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this introduction helpful. Again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.